This is a five-year-old little girl who had a knife to the eye. And you can see the primary repair was just repair for the ruptured globe. Then they had a hydration of the cataract and she underwent cataract extraction, lensectomy about five days later. So normally what we do is we wait about a month in children, then we remove the stitches. And a primary repair of a ruptured globe, we don't put in a lens at that time, we wait until suture removal. So I'm gonna remove this one stitch here. Uh, I'm gonna remove the rest of the stitches at the very end. In secondary lens implants, I like to do scleral tunnels in children. Most, even primary lens implants, I like scleral tunnel incision rather than clear cornea. So in children, the limb is a little further back. The tenons end about one to two mils, so you hold further back out. You cut down to Sierra, I tunnel across. And pyridomy wise, you have to pull up. That's the only way to get conjunctiva off the limbus. So I always pull up. So you can use a regular knife. I like to do a three-step incision off the sclera. In children, if you do clear corner, you have to be pretty clear corner or the iris will come out. This way, the iris will tend to stay in if you do a nice uh, scleral incision. Limbus about two millimeters. I do about four, uh, a four millimeter incision. And you want to go flat, you want to tunnel up the sclera. Tunnel up until about clear cornea. Okay, and you leave that alone. That's really just for lens implantation. So this is a 20 gauge MBR blade. We're going to make two ports. Whenever we do a lensectomy in children, we always do a two port incision. So if you're not going to put in a lens, we don't do this scleral incision. So here are some iris strands I can cut. The great part about using vitrectomy for almost everything in children is you have an infusion that maintains the chamber. So here's some sneakies. If it's tough and you need to cut it, you can put in an MBR blend. I'm just cutting that open. It wasn't breaking for me. So I'm trying to cut that open a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good actually. So if you notice, I went, after I released all the sneak gaze, the iris came together a little bit. That's enough sulcus, so we're good actually. Put some viscoelastic, open up the sulcus area. Follow the scleral incision, then once you hit the end, you tilt up, then you go in. Okay, that's the third step. So here's the lens. We put in a three-piece lens. No single-piece lens is in the sulcus. So this is a B cartridge. So the way you put it in, you just align it the same way. Don't bend the haptics. This is a three-piece lens. And make sure it's seated in. Okay, and make sure that this haptic is still on this side of it. Then you'll see the lens move forward. When you shoot it in, the rotation is quite different. See how it bends? So I have to rotate it out this way. That's in the sulcus. See how I'm rotating it back as I'm slowly unrolling it? One haptic's in the sulcus already, so here I'm going to opt the captain junction and just rotate it and pop it in place, hopefully. So in children, you have to suture most incisions. Their sclera is too soft. Uh, they're not going to be sutureless no matter how small the incision is. I don't like clear corneal surgery that much because you have to suture no matter what. Even if it's a small incision surgery, you have to suture it. So it's a nice stitch if you, if you just want to run one stitch across. 
Uh, so now I'm going to take off the viscoelastic using the vitrector. I can kick it off. I set my vitrector up to so where I can kick it off so I can use irrigation aspiration. But the vitreous won't come forward. So the whole idea in a child is to do a core vitrectomy. And the reason why you want the core is because that's scaffolding for PCO to form or the lens material to get the block axis again. But the vitreous won't come forward like you see in adults. So that's usually not the case. But you can use triencephalone just to see the vitreous if you wanted to. Here there was a little strand of vitreous. I just cut that. So I keep on going back and forth between IA and vitrectomy here. And that works very well for me to make sure I don't have any vitreous in the front. I use a steroid antibiotic combination four times a day for about two weeks. If you do a good clean out of the lens material, you shouldn't get much inflammation and they should do quite well. So I'm not too worried about that. And because I buried all my stitches, uh, if I did have to suture my wounds, I would use 10 Vicro. I don't have to take them back for suture removal. And I'm going to close this conjure of 8 Vicro so I don't have to worry about it. Right now, I'm going to just remove the rest of the sutures on the corner, and that's pretty much the case. Five years old, especially with the central visual axis scar. So she has a relatively higher risk for amblyopia, so we have to watch her close. Once this clears in a couple weeks, I would start patching her, make sure she does not start forgetting to use this eye. The sequence of a traumatic cataract here was perfect. You repair the rupture globe first, followed by lensectomy if you need to leave it aphagic until you're ready to remove the stitches a month later. So this worked out perfectly, the sequence for this. So now she'll have a nice secondary lens, we'll remove all the stitches. So hopefully this will be the last surgery she's gonna need. All right, very good, thank you so much.